How would you feel if you could leave millions of dollars to your kids tax-free at the end of your life? I work with my clients every day to do just that, and today I'm gonna show you how. I'm Brad, a certified financial planner, and I'm here to help ensure that your money lasts longer than you do. In this video, I'm gonna discuss how I help clients do Roth conversions in the gap years in order to create wealth in a tax-free manner so they can leave it to those they love both in life and in death. Let's jump in. So today I'm gonna to be talking to you about doing Roth conversions during the gap years. The gap years are those years between when you retire and when required minimum distributions begin. Required minimum distributions, also known as RMDs, are all based upon your age. So if you were born in 1960 or later, your RMD beginning date is age 75. If you were born before 1960, your required minimum distribution beginning date is 73. So those gap years is that period of time between when you're finally done working and when the RMD starts. Typically, you're in a lower income earning year or you're not earning any income at all. So bottom line, you're in a lower tax bracket. That's why we like to target these years because this is an opportune time to do these conversions when you're in a really low bracket. So first of all, let's talk about the IRA and what an RMD is. The required minimum distribution is money that the IRS makes you take out of your IRA. So you've done a good job, you've been saving, you've been putting money in that 401k. When you retire, you roll it over, it's now sitting in a traditional IRA, and the IRS is just licking their chops. They can't wait until you turn 73 or 75 so they can make you start to take money out of here. It's a formula, it's based on a percentage of the account balance and your age, but the bottom line is, these required minimum distributions can get pretty big in later years of your life. The IRS loves that because now your tax bill gets pretty big with those larger RMDs. So let's talk about something different. Let's talk about a Roth IRA. Roth IRAs are accounts that grow tax-free. They do not have required minimum distributions. And all of the distributions, all the money coming out of a Roth, is completely tax-free. They're wonderful vehicles. So the concept of doing a Roth conversion is taking money out of your traditional IRA, converting it into the Roth IRA during your lower income tax years in those gap years, paying the taxes on it when you're in your lower tax years. So that way, all of the growth that happens in the future can happen completely tax-free. Let's just use a case study here as an example I'm gonna show you. So today I'm gonna to introduce you to Mike and Lisa Brown. Mike and Lisa Brown, great people. Of course, the names are made up here, but this is based on case studies that we do really all the time here at Seaside Wealth. Mike and Lisa, they've done a good job, as you can see, saving for retirement. They're in a really good situation, but I'm gonna show you how they took a good situation and made it a great financial situation. So Mike and Lisa, they're both age 60 right now. The first iteration of their plan, their goal was to retire at 65. Although Mike was grumbling all the way, he said, I don't wanna work till 65. I wanna get out there and golf and travel and spend time with the kids and, and hopefully there's some grandkids and do some fun things. I don't wanna work till 65. So that became a focus of our working together. How can we get Mike to retire younger? How can we get them to uh, save money on taxes? And also, how can we get them to help their adult children? So let's take a look at Zach who's 27 years old. Zach graduated college about five years ago. He's got a job. He doesn't love what he does. It's not his favorite job. It's probably not his forever job, but he's working and he's doing okay. Mike and Lisa are just worried for Zach that how is he ever gonna be able to afford a home? Because home prices are so expensive. Interest rates are much higher. It's definitely a more challenging environment for the kids to be able to get started off successfully in life. And then younger son, Kyle, 24 years old, graduated college a couple years ago, he's found that the, the labor market's a challenging environment. So he's been having a hard time getting jobs. He's, he's working kind of more, less permanent jobs, but he's still looking for what he wants to find. So Mike and Lisa are, are really worried about Kyle and they're hoping that he can kind of land on two feet and, and really get set up for the future here. So in today's strategy, we're gonna show you how we not only help Mike retire younger, we helped him save money on taxes, but we also helped them to take care of Zach and Kyle in, in a really cool way. So let's take a look. Here's some of the things that 
Mike and Lisa have shared with us that are important to them. Lisa has a real concern about making sure that the boys launch into the world successfully. Uh, she'd like to help them buy a home. And Lisa also needs to take care of her aging parents. She's part of the sandwich generation. And the sandwich generation is that generation that's sandwiched between aging parents who are needing help and then adult kids who are needing to launch into the world. And Lisa's definitely feeling um, that effect of being in the sandwich generation. In addition, Lisa would love to be able to take river cruises. She loves to travel and she loves getting out there doing that. She wants to make sure that she maintains good health. She'd like to exercise more. She wants to volunteer at church. And one of her big bucket list items is to travel to Africa. And in order for her to do this, she wants her, uh, her partner in crime, Mike, to be able to go with her. And in order to do this, Mike really wants to retire before the age of 65. That's a big goal here of his. When Mike retires, he wants to travel to Europe. He does want to assist the boys buying that first home. He has an appetite for travel. He really wants to travel to Australia and New Zealand. Wants to play golf throughout the U.S. Mike loves to ski. Mike wants to be able to ski for as long as he can. And he wants to be able to spend time in the mountains. They've got a little vacation home in the mountains and Mike would love to spend some more time there. What I noticed when we first met was they didn't really have any sort of financial plan. They'd done a good job saving, but there was not a cohesive plan in place that acted as their roadmap or their blueprint to show them what to do. So step one was to take all the things in their life put it together and create this plan that showed them what they were on track for. And then step two, once we determined they were in a good financial situation, was to show them how to turn it into a great financial situation. A goal for Mike and Lisa was to be able to travel every year and be able to spend about $15,000 per year on travel. And that's all the way until Mike turns 85. Typically, people start to slow down in their 80s, and so that's what we reflected in their plan here. In addition to the... Uh, to the travel spend, we have a base living expenses in retirement of right around $85,000. Plus we've put in expenses for medical, we've got that travel expense, we've got some life insurance expenses. So Mike and Lisa are living on about $120,000 per year plus federal and state taxes, which we've modeled into their plan right here. So we're really looking at the big picture for Mike and Lisa, and we're helping to set them up for success. On top of that, they've got some decent income sources. They have social security, and we worked through a long process about timing strategies around social security. And the answer for when you should start taking social security is really customized to, to your unique set of circumstances. For Mike and Lisa, we determined that delaying all the way until age 70 was the optimal strategy for them. It put the most amount of money in their pockets for the longest amount of time. This is not necessarily the right strategy for everybody, but for Mike and Lisa, it made sense. And I really encourage you to spend time analyzing and determining the timing strategy around your social security. I see far too many people make really bad decisions around social security. Primarily, I see people taking their benefit way too soon. They're leaving plenty of money on the table. Sometimes as much as 70% of their benefit gets reduced because they take that benefit way too early. So before you make a bad decision around social security, get in touch with me and we'll help you think this thing through and really model for you to help determine what's the best strategy given, given your unique circumstances and life situation. With that, let's take a look at Mike and Lisa's balance sheet. So they're in a solid position and they're like many people who've done a great job putting money away into pre-tax investment accounts. So we've got traditional IRAs and we've got 401ks that they spent a lifetime saving into. So that's a good thing. And that's what everybody's been taught to do is save money before tax, lower the taxes in the years when you're earning, and then take money out in the future. The only problem is as you age with those required minimum distributions kicking on in your 70s, you're gonna be faced with very large tax bills, which we're gonna see in a moment. You can see that Mike and Lisa have Roth IRAs that they've set up, but they're not large balances in there primarily because Mike and Lisa were in high income earning years for many years of their career, and they were not eligible to make Roth contributions. So that's why we're diving into the strategy about doing the conversions from the traditional IRA to the Roth IRA now. So what you can see here in looking at their balance sheet is that 
Mike and Lisa are in a, a really good situation here, almost an $8 million net worth. About half of that is liquid, and then the other half is in the real estate holdings. Primary residence, they own a rental condo, and they own a vacation home that they really enjoy up in the mountains. Again, the theme is taking a good situation and helping to make it great. Let me show you what I mean. So this is Mike and Lisa. This is their cash flow statement right here. And what you're looking at is as they age, we're anticipating that they're going to have somewhere close to nine or $10 million left in their liquid investments by the time they reach age 100, which is the life expectancy we're projecting in the plan. And when we stress test this, we run it against a thousand randomly generated scenarios and we find that they're in solid financial shape. They have nothing to worry about. There's a high probability that they are not gonna run out of money. We feel very confident about their financial future. But when you peel the onion back, when you peel the layers back just a little bit, what you see is that Mike and Lisa, while they do have a wonderful financial future, they also have a rather large tax bill ahead of them to the tune of $5.5 million. So take a look at this. Over the course of Mike and Lisa's lifetime, we're projecting that they're gonna pay somewhere near 5.5 million in taxes. Look, we're big fans. Everybody needs to pay their fair share when it comes to taxes, but you never wanna leave the IRS a tip. Why would you wanna overpay your taxes? So by knowing the tax code, knowing the rules, and knowing strategies around how to lower your tax bill, you can pay what you owe, but you don't have to overpay. Let me show you what I mean. With Mike and Lisa, we looked at a situation where we did Roth conversions in the gap years. And let me show you what that looks like right here. It's these years after retirement, before the required minimum distribution kicks on. You can see the red here. These are the conversions which causes larger tax bills in those gap years. And in exchange for paying a little bit more in the early parts of retirement, a little bit more in taxes, you can see the gray area. These are the required minimum distributions that have been reduced significantly because of the Roth conversions. So let's quantify this for you. By doing the Roth conversion strategy and filling up the 22% tax bracket, that was the strategy we selected for Mike and Lisa, we were able to lower their tax bill by almost $3.4 million. And now that there wasn't all this tax drag coming out of their investments, the overall portfolio balance increased by nearly $7 million. That's a lot of money. Just by knowing the rules, knowing the code, and using the rules to your advantage, they saved a lot of money. But wait, the story's not over. It gets better. Let me explain. In the first scenario, I mentioned that they were on track to be age 100 with somewhere between nine and $10 million of liquid investments. Pretty good scenario. One that I think most people would love to have, okay? When we dig a little deeper into that scenario, we see that Mike's Roth IRA in their base plan was projected to have about $1.873 million in it. Now we're using very conservative growth rates, somewhere around five and a half, six percent We think they're gonna do much better than that, but we don't wanna over project in the plan. So even with really conservative growth rates of five and a half or 6%, Mike was on track to have about 1,873,000 left with which to give to Zach and Kyle at the end of his life. By doing the Roth conversion strategy, take a look at how the game has changed. Now, in this scenario, Mike's Roth IRA has $14,374,000 in it at the end of his life. That's nearly a $12 million increase, and it's all tax-free, and it all goes to the boys. Talk about being able to help the boys out and really set them up for success. And in the following conversations that we had with Mike and Lisa, when they took a look at these numbers, they said, that's great. We don't really need to give them 14 million when we die. What if we started to explore gifting strategies as we get on in years? So we're currently working on a strategy to start gifting money to the boys when Mike and Lisa age. So that way Mike and Lisa get to watch the joy that is created in Zach and Kyle's life, as well as the grandkids that Lisa really hopes is coming along soon. And I hope she gets what she wants.
Mike and Lisa have a solid plan in place to make sure that they do not run out of money, to make sure that Mike can retire earlier. And here's the cherry on top. After working through the plan, we determined that Mike can retire at age 62. And he was so happy. He says he's ready to get out golfing. He wants to go travel. He wants to hang out with Lisa. They have lots of trips planned. And he could not be happier to be able to retire at 62, keep the tax bill much lower, $3.4 million tax savings, while increasing his investment portfolio by $7 million and being able to help Zach and Kyle along the way by giving them tax-free gifts, both during life and at the end of life. So the plan worked out really well for Mike and Lisa. If this is something you're interested in or if this resonates with you, please get in touch with me and I'll show you how to do this too and help you lower your tax bill and give more money away in a tax-free way to people that you love. If you like what you heard in this video and you want help creating peace around the issue of money, there's a link in the description below to talk with me.